I, I will never forget, I will never vote for him. I will never vote for any Democrat again after they, what they did to us this time. Arab and Muslim Americans feel betrayed by President Biden and his response on Gaza. Right now, he needs to call for an immediate ceasefire and he needs to change his rhetoric. Israeli attacks have killed more than 10,000 Palestinians in just one month. And many are blaming the Biden administration for supporting the Israeli military and for diminishing Palestinian deaths. When I see a president fail to uphold that, they've lost all respect for me. For many Palestinian Americans, the violence in Gaza is not a distant reality. It's very close to home. Do you know how many family members you've lost so far? It's uh, 20. Yeah, so four on Saturday, four on Monday, and 12 on, on Wednesday. We traveled to Dearborn, Michigan, home to the largest Arab American population in the U.S., to find out how the Biden administration's unwavering support of Israel is impacting their view of the president. We must be crystal clear. We stand with Israel. Surveys estimate Biden won more than two-thirds of the Muslim vote in the U.S. in 2020. But if those voters switch or even stay home, it could cost Biden a crucial swing state and potentially the 2024 election. Michigan is one of the most important states in the, um, in the presidential elections, and I think he's taking it for granted. He cannot win without our vote. Adam Abu Salah is a Palestinian American who worked on the Biden campaign in 2020. I you know, knocked on doors, I, I organized for Arab Americans to go out and vote for Joe Biden and I will not be voting for him in 2024. This is a photo of uh, Biden and I um, at a meet and greet in Dearborn. And then there's this cake. What is this cake? It says, happy birthday, Adam. Biden 2020, <laughs> what is that? Yeah, so my birthday was actually two days after election day in 2020, because I was so focused on the Biden campaign and I was so focused about talking about Biden. I, you know, so my parents just made a joke out of it. And well, what do you feel when you see a, these pictures? What, what do you feel now? I, I feel a sense of betrayal. You know, we really went out for Biden and historically whoever, won, whoever wins Michigan wins the presidency. And really, I, I use the word that we, we saved Biden in Michigan. You know, I, I supported the man who's funding the genocide of my people. I, you know, I feel guilt. Adam says the Biden administration's actions and words have actively harmed Palestinians. Like when President Biden discounted the massive death toll in Gaza. I'm sure innocents have been killed and it's the price of waging a war, but I have no confidence in the number that the Palestinians are using. The, the fact that he would discount the amount of people that died and said, well, they're exaggerating the numbers a bit, that's not presidential. Uh, and again, that's what's making people in the Arab American community outraged. This is somebody that we supported, this is somebody that we came out for, and right now he's discounting how we feel, but also continuing to fund the uh, genocide against our people in Palestine. Many Palestinian American voters in Michigan have lost family members in Israel's incessant bombing of Gaza. Dr. Imad Shahada says Israeli airstrikes have killed a staggering 20 members of his family. Uh, my cousin, my first cousin, uh, was killed in an attack on his house. His only daughter and uh, his youngest two sons died also in the attack. A couple of my cousins uh, died also in an attack on their home. Uh, one of my cousins was pregnant with her first uh, child. The other one was just a recent graduate from, from college and had her whole life ahead of her. And the younger children were at basic elementary age school. The uh, third one was on last Wednesday. Twelve people died uh, in that attack, including a young child. The house that was attacked was the house next to my sister's house. Dr. Shahada said his sister and her immediate family survived the attack. That's the one that's really affected me the most because it's 10 meters in the wrong direction and, and my sister would have been the one who died. Dr. Shahada says he messages his sister every day, but there are often internet outages. The last time I talked to her personally was over the phone was last week. The phone call ended very emotionally. You know, she started crying at the end. I mean, she was holding strong the whole time, but I think she just broke up you know, at the end and couldn't hold it anymore. I probably, because being her older brother should be calling her and supporting her, but you know, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't find the strength in me really to hear her voice again that way. A pulmonologist operating right outside Dearborn, Dr. Shahada has been in the U.S. since the year 2000. He said while Gaza has been attacked by Israel before, the destruction he's seeing now is on another level. People are dying every day. They're dying in the hundreds and they're dying in the thousands. You're not only killing them, you're starving them before killing them. There is no food, there is no water, there is no electricity. I, I don't think they're targeting Hamas anymore, they're just targeting the Palestinian people. The Biden administration says it's working to get aid into Gaza, but Dr. Shahada says the focus should be on a ceasefire. Humanitarian aid at this time is, is not the problem. I mean, 
What's the point of feeding people if we're planning to kill them next day? The most important thing right now is to stop this fighting. If, if this is not a war crime, I don't know what's a war crime. And we are supporting these war crimes. We are paying for it. We're not only approving it, we're also paying for it with our tax money. President Biden has asked Congress for $14.3 billion in military aid for Israel. That's in addition to the billions of dollars the U.S. sends every year. In fact, since World War II, Israel has received more U.S. aid than any other country. The security package I'm sending to Congress is an unprecedented commitment to Israel's security. Despite voting for Biden in the 2020 election, Dr. Shahada says he will not vote for him again in 2024, even if he's running against Trump. I don't see any difference in their policy between both of them, at least about Trump. You know what he's going to do. You will not feel betrayed. I mean, I really feel betrayed with what uh, Biden did this time. That sense of betrayal is common among the Arab and Muslim community, according to Nada Al Hanuti. Nada is the executive director of M Gage in Michigan, a nonprofit focused on encouraging Muslim Americans to vote. The uh, Israeli government is performing a lot of egregious war crimes uh, to the Palestinian community, including collective punishment, use of white phosphorus, targeting the um, hospitals and sanctuary zones. And we are pressing the Biden administration to act now and to enforce a ceasefire for our sisters and brothers in Palestine. Nada says the betrayal felt by the Muslim community is going to impact how they vote and could cost Biden the 2024 election. In 2020, there were nearly 1.1 million Muslim American voters nationally. Biden and the Democratic Party need the Muslim vote in order to win. In Michigan alone, we had 145,000 Michigan Muslims go out to vote, and Biden won by 155,000 votes. A recent poll showed that support for Biden among Arab Americans fell from 59% in 2020 to just 17% today. And right now, there's a lot of mistrust within our community. Um, the, our community members do not feel seen, do not feel heard, they do not feel safe. And right now, it's not looking good for the um, Biden campaign. Dearborn is represented by Palestinian American Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. She has publicly criticized Biden, saying he, quote, supported the genocide of the Palestinian people. Mr. President, the American people are not with you on this one. A lot of our community members are coming to me. They're saying, Neda, we're either vote third party, we are not going to vote top ticket, or we're going to stay home. The Muslim and Arab voters we talked to in Dearborn echoed those feelings. I'm a Christian Palestinian, and I've had my grandparents that were displaced in 1948 at the Nakba. I voted for Joe Biden, who I like to say is not my president. We're really dealing with a very difficult, it's like a, between a rock and a hard place at that point. Nowadays, if you're voting for Biden or if even if you're voting for Trump, you're putting yourself into a situation where other people's lives are in stake. I will not vote for Joe Biden in the 2024 election. The cost of a Palestinian life means more to me than anything else. Honestly, I'm leaning towards not voting in the first place. So I pray and hope at that point there's going to be some sort of a change. We're not just ticking a box because we have no choice. It was actually a Trump policy that pushed Adam to get involved in the Biden campaign in the first place. But even if Trump is the Republican nominee, Adam says he won't vote for Biden. Uh, the main reason, honestly, was because of the Muslim ban. When Biden was running against Trump, I thought that Biden would be somebody who um, would lead with compassion, would lead with humanity. I thought he would be somebody that, uh, that was a little bit different, uh, but clearly I was wrong. Multiple people we spoke to said that the danger to Muslims is the same now as it was under President Trump. Again, we are experiencing the same harmful rhetoric. We're experiencing the same Islamophobia and the same hate crimes and a government and an administration that is not listening to us. The Council on American Islamic Relations has received hundreds of complaints of Islamophobia and hate incidents since October 7th, more than three times the average from 2022 in a similar time period. In one case, police arrested a man who said he wanted to, quote, hunt Palestinians in Dearborn. And in Illinois, a man killed a six-year-old Palestinian-American boy, Wadiya al-Fayyumi, in what authorities called a hate crime. When I go to my local mosque and the door is locked and somebody has to let you in uh, because of you know, security concerns, you know, we're Americans, we, we shouldn't have to feel that way. And we shouldn't have to feel scared, uh, you know, not because of lies, but because of stuff that the President of the United States is saying. The message from the Arab and Muslim community in Michigan to President Biden is very clear. We grieve, we cry, we hurt, but we channel that energy and we're very proactive and we fight. We are going to continue to fight for our sisters and brothers back home. Right now, he needs to call for an immediate ceasefire 
and he needs to change his rhetoric. But whatever President Biden chooses to do, he's already lost the vote of many of the people who helped him win Michigan. History will not forgive him for doing this. We will not forgive him when, for this when November comes next year. We will not forget.